It's that time again. It's the Berkey and the Badger Board Game Babble Show. It's going to get wild. It's going to get wacky. It might even get a little zany. We're going to talk about board games in the board game industry. And, you know, we might talk about anything else we want to talk about. Hey, 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 hey. We are live, Berkey and Badger with the Board Game Babble Show. And we have a super fun show today. <laughs> I can't use them. It won't work with it. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. no. It is going to be super fun. He can't hear me. <laughs> <laughs> Again. <laughs> Welcome, Babylonites, to the wonderful kingdom of Babylon, where I am your rightful king, Berkey, owner of Babylon. Uh, no, I'm not owner of Babylon. Uh, supreme ruler of Bab. No. It, well, you uh, should take out copyright, and then you are the owner of, of um, Grand Poobah of uh, yeah. <laughs> kind, benevolent ruler. Yes, that's much better. Kind, benevolent ruler of Babylon. And I said improvise. Uh, we are here where everyone's a board game enthusiast, from your humble king right down to <coughs> the lowliest of the stable boys. And speaking of the lowest of low, welcome the court jester, Sir Badger the Brave. Well, good evening. Hello. I have been to etiquette classes. Uh, even though I'm a stable boy, I will I now know. speak with the king's English. Mm. Oh, the king's English. Yes, because he likes to babble a lot. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I do, I do. Uh, I do, I do. Tell us, Sir Badger, what is going on in the kingdom of Babylon, shall we? <laughs> yes, in this episode, uh, number 79, uh, which is not the 2020 awards, which is well, not our 2020 awards. It's other people's 2020 awards. Um, we're going to quickly have a roundup about what's go what's happened in Babylon since last time um, we we got together, and then we're going to do a roundup of rumors and things that make the king go hmm. Followed by um, the good, the bad, and the ugly section, where we do a first impression section of games that we've played recently for the first time and. Uh, we're going to finish off by talking about uh, our babble topic, which is the the awards so far in the board game rounds. Was that in good English? Yeah, so I think it was quite good English. I'm trying to pull up the chat. Okay. I don't have the link. Oh, dear. Oh dear. oh dear! Oh dear! You might have, you might have to turn your volume down because I can hear me. I can hear me. You can hear you back in my speaker. I can indeed. Well, I'm not sure what I'm going to be able to do about that. I do have the snowball hooked up for recording direct to the to the sound. Okay. We're sorry for technical difficulties here. I will turn you down. I will give you the pop up. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. The challenges Ready? of trying to get a podcast done in the middle of a work day. Mm, well, we could always do it at the end of a work day and the beginning of a work morning for me. Well, I've been doing some super fun stuff. Um, yeah. We'll talk oh, yes. about it a little bit later, but I've been. Uh, I've been on, on a couple of things that I had to go to the shop because I've been actually personally installing all of the dog mite sculpted wood uh, for the dragon and the Viking rails for our game yeah. toppers. They're very limited edition. I hand signed the back of every topper, uh, <gasps> installed the wood to make sure that the grain and the stain match well. Um, so this morning, the good king... Mm -hmm. Go downstairs to bring some stuff downstairs just before I'm getting ready to go to the shop. And what do I do? I miss the bottom rung of the steps. <laughs> and I tend to roll down the steps with a half of a topper in my hands and uh, crash into my knee and roll in my shoulder. Topper goes flying into the wall, dents the sheetrock. 
And you guess what? You know, my knees bleeding, my shoulders are bruised. Uh, the the king is like a weeble. He wobbles, but he does not fall down. <laughs> if I did fall down, and Humpty Dumpty could not put all the king's horses back together again. Yes, but luckily your head was protected by that big mass of hair, which is accumulated yeah. over this. It's <laughs> luxuriant, right? This period of time since since February. So the topper goes flying into the wall. The topper is totally unscathed. But uh, Brookie, your humble king, is like a, a, in in the famous uh, show Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Who? Uh, Bumble's bounce. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a very interesting morning, to, to say the least. Oh, that was interesting. A lot more interesting than my morning. That's for sure. Even though it's very, very quiet here. Remember, remember last time I spoke about normality? Yes. Briefly. Okay. We got some, I've got some kind of normality again. The kids have been taken away by the grandparents. The yeah. wife is back at work full time. And so okay. I have I have the whole house to myself and I can concentrate on my work without someone coming in and telling me to turn it down or someone coming in just to show me that they can stack two bricks or someone coming in and say that they're stuck on a level on some computer game that they've been playing. Um, <laughs> and I have been able to let the the flavors of ambience flow from my fingers through my keyboard through my microphone onto the computer ready to be packaged as a soundtrack and it's it's been it's been great not having interference uh and just being able to you know put my blinkers on and just go with the flow and not having to stop and start every now and again, which is nice. Um, yeah, you can get something done, right? Yeah, I can get a lot done, which leads me to, again, the last show. We had Mr. Stephen Bonacle with us, and he had an announcement to make, but he didn't make it on our show. He made it not long after our show that he was retiring. And uh, this has been something which is – been bab babbling around in my head a little bit as well and when i say retiring i i don't mean retiring tiring and not working anymore and uh, claiming my pension and everything i'm on about leaving the board game reviews behind uh due to the fact that i have an immense an immense amount of uh soundtrack and music and sound effects to do at the moment and i will not have any time yeah, which is rather annoying because I've just said a load of, you know, Kickstarter games that said, yeah, can we send you a prototype and you look at it? And I'm like, yeah, no problems. And now I'll, I've got those games coming in and I go, well, I've said yes, so I'm going to be obliged to do them. But it looks like I might have to just knock it on the head due to the fact that I have no time. And due to the fact that all the circumstances which have been happening recently all around the world, I haven't been able to play any games. Um, it's been abysmal. Do you want to have a quick look? Do you want to have a quick look? Have a quick look at this. This is all the games that I've played from January the 1st so far. That's it. <laughs> One page on Board Game Geek. Well, at least you're logging them. Yeah. Yeah, they're there. Oh, but I can only log the ones that are on Board Game Geek. You know, I mean, sometimes you get a Kickstarter game and it's not on, on Board Game Geek. But, um, yeah, not a lot of playing has happened in this first half of this year. Um, so, yeah, it's probably going to be a pause more than a retirement, I think. Yeah, I think that's the thing. Times change and we go through seasons in life, whether it's due to circumstances we can't control or due to just different life changes. You know, you've had children that have, you know, jumped yeah. right in the middle of all your stuff. And, you know, here I've, I've got a business that's booming and, and jumped in all my stuff. And, uh, you know, I'm not playing games like I used to play, but I likewise, I think it's a season, and I hope that it's a season because I would like to get back to playing more games as well. 
Yes, right? exactly. Yeah. I mean, uh, the gaming group, obviously, I can't get the gaming group together because it's an organization which is done through our community center. And the rules are we're not allowed to have more than 10 people. But how do you prepare for that? If you have a, a, a night of gaming, what do you do? Do you say, oh, only 10 people can come? You got to wear a mask. Um, yeah, it's it's more organization and more time consuming for me to do that, especially because it's in another language and that instead of doing what I'm doing at the moment. And as I said, there are bucket loads of sound tracks coming at the moment. I'm working on a soundtrack for this Dungeons and Dragons adventure, Curse of Strad for the Sirenscape app. Um, I've just got the Kemet soundtrack to do, which was the Kickstarter. So I'm I'm got to start working on that soon i've got the titan uh from holy grail games which is wrapping up um that's about 80 to 90 percent finished um and then i have uh, i've just finished doing a demo for the next seventh citadel game and there's another one somewhere that i'm working on kemet da -da. Yeah. So how many, how many hours does it take you, do, would you say, to do a soundtrack for a game? How many hours? It, is, it depends on the soundtrack. It depends how passionate I am. Um, because, it's, it's, for example, something like this, I'll read the story. And you could just like do like the basic main room sounds and uh, battle music and calm music, scary music and uh, just ambient background music. But then again, you might read a line and it might just say something really bizarre. But then I dive really into that. I, I, I think it's such a little nice thing. It's like I've just uh, there's a room in this house and there's a harp called in a harp just standing around in this room. I thought, you know what? Wouldn't it be nice if the player says, you know what, I'm going to play the harpsichord. And so I've created a sound of me playing harpsichord, several different harpsichord sounds, uh, uh, songs and little melodies and things. Um, but they take time. And it's just something which may not even be used in the adventure or not in the game or might not be heard, but it's there. Yeah. Uh, and that, that's the thing that I do. I, I It's like with Kemet, I've got so many little ideas and it's like, well, is anybody going to really know that that's there? But I might spend a couple of hours just on one two second sound. So in regards to time. It's really hard for me to put a finger on because, again, some styles are quite easy to to come out from me. And some styles are not. At the moment, I'm doing some uh, string quartets. And I've never done string quartets before. And so string quartets are a totally def different kettle of fish to rock music, which is what just what I've recently done, and that, which is different to harpsichords and pipe organs, which I've, I'm doing at the moment as well. So I have all these different styles. And some of them come out fluidly, and some of them just stagger along, and it's like hard work. So, yeah, I kind of can't give myself like a guideline of about four or five months for a project. So yeah, it's, it's like back the creative, what I'm hearing you say is the creativity is, is driving the amount of time that it's going to take. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's awesome. That's fantastic. Yeah. I've got a, another issue that I'm dealing with and oh, uh, right. it's very sad because many of you know how much I like mowing my lawn. <laughs> And making my lawn look beautiful. I want to make my lawn great again. Believe me. I'm going to make my lawn great again. It's going to be the most luxurious lawn you've ever seen. Believe me when I say it. Everybody knows it. They're going to see it. They're going to agree with it. It's going to be amazing. Uh-huh. So, <laughs> uh, but I got problems. Uh, I have rascals in my yard. <gasps> and I have a couple different kinds of rascals. I have grubs. And I don't yeah. have one or two grubs. I've got grubs, big, fat, juicy grubs. I mean, you want to have an episode of Fear Factor? I've got blenders <laughs> full of grubs. <laughs> All right. I, it's, it's a deal. Um, <laughs> and, well, guess who likes grubs? Skunks um, like grubs. Mm -hmm. And so skunks are invading my property, digging, digging in my yard, pulling up the dead grass that the grubs have eaten 
now we got brown patches all over the place and torn up it looks like torn up carpet and guess who's not happy about it um just the king so is not happy about it <laughs> the king's garden is uh, abysmal and he nobody will visit war on these critters i am oh. buying protective stuff to get rid of them and if you don't like that i'm too bad because i'm getting rid of them uh, look at the bright side the skunks will get rid of the grubs and once the grubs are gone the skunks will be gone because there'll be no grubs there for them and my lawn will be gone yeah yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> you forget that down in this end we have it's very very hot a very of hot weather lush greenness that is gone I know my lush greenness is gone because we have very burn burning sun here. Yeah, very, I sound like someone else there, but we have scorching suns which just dry up our grass. It doesn't matter how much water we give them at night; they just dry up. And then we have hose pipe bands, and then it's like you can't water your grass, so your grass goes yellow, and you just have to wait for next year. No, we have we have ways of dealing with the grubs, and we have ways of dealing with the skunks. Yeah. I have some special lights that are going in to ward them off, and some particular smells that they do not like. How about some cats? And once like I kill the grubs, the skunks will go, hey, there's nothing here to eat anymore. I'm not going to keep mm. digging in this guy's yard. Well, you could always put some cats in your neighbor's garden, and then the skunks will go after them. You've got to paint a white line on the back of them as well first. <laughs> Pippi Le Pew, Le Pew. He likes, he loves. I'm in the mood for love. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what's going on in Babylon. So, mm. what's going on about the poll from last week? Did we have a poll go up? We didn't have a poll from last week, but we did have a poll from the week before when we had Scott Morris on the show. Do you remember? Yes, yes, yes. We had yes. Tom. You're right. Yes, we did. And then we were talking about supply chains and how to, you know, carry on um, with our gaming and, and 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 keeping our businesses going. Well, the, those that own board game stores, that's for sure. Um, and as you can see on Board Game Geek here, they've updated this very, this very nice now, the old um, um, poll chart. It looks lovely. And you can see clearly... Everything is on there. Okay. So the question was, um, how do you acquire your games mainly? And a whopping 80% of our voters said that they order from online stores, uh, where six, uh, 36%. That doesn't make sense. All right. <laughs> 131 people voted for online stores. 60 people voted from a store um but again as you can see i voted three times because i get from online stores from stores and hand me downs from friends and families <laughs> oh and i'm the only one that voted i probably <laughs> overseas benefactors is that in there anywhere no <laughs> oh man uh three people voted free i get my games free because i know a guy um okay yeah, and then 28 votes were trading through online stores. Hmm, that doesn't make sense. 80%, 36%, 17%, 3%. That doesn't total up to 100%, does it? No. <laughs> but anyhow, that was our poll from the, uh, our last show. about well, and the, t the timing of that is during a COVID crisis, so obviously people are buying a lot of stuff online. Yeah, and these are fake polls. These, they're not they're, they're not real they're not real <laughs> yeah, they're, they're fake polls <laughs> <laughs> well with that uh, we want to bring on our great game sponsor uh arcane wonders who's been with us for such a wonderful long time and arcane wonders has such a great variety of games with the dice tower essential games like the Sheriff of Nottingham was the first one in Royals and Spoils of War. There's also all kinds of different games. And with that, we have their latest offering that you can still late pledge for, the wonderful... The city building board game, Foundations of Rome, puts you in the role of an architect competing to own land and build magnificent structures. 
Build Dumas's fountains, foundries, and more to increase your renown, gain glory for yourself and the Empire. With 96 wonderfully detailed miniatures in the base game, Foundations of Rome is a testament to the glory of Rome that you can bring to the table. Love Foundations of Rome. I, I got to tell you, it's one of my most anticipated games of the year, and it has nothing to do with the sponsorship. I love that game. Uh, Emerson mm -hmm. Natsuchi has just done such a brilliant job, and you can even get a custom Roman themed three foot by five foot game mat to play Foundations of Rome from Game Toppers in a partnership that we have with them. They've already sold over 1,500 of them. It's just remarkable. Uh, we are going to have that Foundations of Rome map as Game Topper uh, map in all of the Game Topper sizes in the future as well. So you can check out the wonderful offerings. Land, Air, and Sea is a great little two-player game that, that they're just doing bonkers with that. That thing has taken off to the moon. Um, it's really a fun little game. Uh, and check them out at ArcaneWonders.com. And with that, we're going to move on to the segment, Things That Makes the King Go, Hmm. I think it's this one. This is the Board Game News, where King Berkey reflects on some of the current things happening in the board game industry. Some may be good, some may be bad, but they're all things that made our king go, Hmm. Hmm. Yes. Hmm. hmm. Well, the thing that caught my eye was reported by ICV2. Uh, and ICV2 talked about Amazon de an, an atomizing third party sellers, which hmm. uh, we talked about this just a little bit. And I think Stephen Bonacor and Nasi Chevichek on Board Games Insider talked about this as well. But Amazon will begin displaying the business's name and addresses for all third-party sellers in the U.S. on September 1st. The change may help tame some more of the destructive elements of Amazon's third-party marketplace. Companies trying to track the source of counterfeit games and other products will now have another tool to identify the source. Enforcement of the minimum advertised pricing, the map pricing policies, will also get easier for companies to enforce Amazon is also taking, this is what I thought made me go, hmm. Yeah. Amazon is also taking its own steps to crack down on counterfeiters, announcing last month that it was establishing, wait for it, a counterfeit crimes unit. Ooh. Dun -dun. That needs its own theme song. <laughs> a counterfeit crimes unit composed of former federal prosecutors, experienced investigators, data analysts, dedicated to pursuing civil litigation against bad actors, working with brands or joint or independent investigations and aiding law enforcement worldwide in criminal actions against counterfeiters. Mm. Wow. I found that very interesting. And I think it's been, we all like to get a good price on a game. I think a lot of people go online and then when they see that good price, the old adage of sometimes if it's too good, looks too good to be true, it is too, you know? Yeah. Um, and we found that some of the more popular games are getting counterfeit and other things. Well, this this does severe damage to any publisher. Yeah. Um, and this this seems like a good thing. I It's interesting to me that they're going all out and putting together a complete crime investigation unit. You know, I think they need to. They're, they're, they're responsible, aren't they? They're, 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 it's like it's like they own, say, a Walmart, but they're selling stock through one of their employees, which is not their stock, and that money is going into their pocket. So it's like they're paying they're paying this person to work for them, but they're not working for them, but they're working for themselves and earning money. I think that's one way to put it. I may be wrong. <laughs> But, this uh, is why that, that's good. That's good. 
because they have too much power. No, I agree with you. And I think, I think these things, if they can get that in line so that there can be a level playing field, I think that's very good. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah I think it's great. Uh, I thought that was interesting though, that they have a complete crimes unit. And that's really the only thing that uh, really caught my interest in the board game news yeah. uh, this time. So I think with that, we're going to move on to some of the games that we've been playing lately in the good, the not so bad, and the ugly segment. Which I don't have a drop for still. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, oh, rest in peace, Ennio Macaroni. Mac Any, macaroni Ennio, and cheese? Ennio Maricone. <laughs> he passed away, didn't he, a couple of weeks ago? Oh, no. The composer of uh, many a great um, theme. Did all the spaghetti westerns. A lot of spaghetti westerns. So, um, big thank you. Did a lot of um, great sound effects. Oh, great sound effects. Great theme tunes um my my most preferred one is obviously the thing john carpenter's the thing which he you know kind of sounds john carpenter -y, but it's him amazing so anyway the good the bad and the ugly is our first impression segment where we talk about games that we've played for the first time um and we give you our first impressions but we do it in a kind of gamey way and we try and guess what the game is from the other player and the other player the other co-host and uh try and guess whether they think it's good bad or ugly so first impressions ha huh. now as you saw all the I mean, games uh, that i've played i've spoken about on the show and so i have nothing new <laughs> to talk about unless i talk about the last game that i played which <clears throat> i played solo it has it has a lot a lot of cards in fact the whole game is cards and storytelling of cards and uh it's an adventure on an island and you are cursed and you have to do your best to get rid of this curse you might have one curse you might have many curses you might have seven curses you might have uh, a soundtrack playing in the background <laughs> from yours truly um but this game i played solo i played a different curse and died <laughs> can you guess what this game is robinson crusoe no um did, did it have a soundtrack oh it's uh i know what it is um oh come on uh I know exactly what it is. Uh, oh! um, I've played it. I know you love the game. Um, it was a big Kickstarter. Um, uh, Seventh Continent. Yay! I was ready to do a... <laughs> hey, we got Jesse Shanky is in the house, my good buddy. And we got to get together. We got to get together. Yeah, me too. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm still playing the Seventh Continent. So it's not really a first impression because it's like the, the 50th time that I've played it. Um, but um, I can't get anyone to play with. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like that's the only thing that i can do so you probably know what my answer is it's a good game it's still good there's a lot of reading i i get a bit impatient and i'd start you know i start really slowly i'm reading the text i'm looking at the cards and then as the game goes on i get excited i'm like right i need to know what's going on oh is this monster gonna kill me uh, oh i haven't got much energy i need to do that and i'm i'm rushing through and all of a sudden i'm dead because i'm rushing i'm not stepping back and going okay right i need to analyze okay should i use this weapon here or should i use this camouflage to hide and maybe not get attacked or to to, to get past this skill check so yes seventh continent is still one of my most played games and one that i still keep playing uh due to the fact that i can put the music on and those rarer moments i put the music on all the time 
to be honest. But on those rare moments when I, I do get time to myself and there's nobody in the house and nobody wants to play, that's the only thing I can... That's the only game that I will play solo and crack open. So there you go. Not really a first impression. <laughs> yeah, I got a chance to play it a couple ver- a couple rounds with uh, Kai. And I think Jesse was involved in one of those. Yeah. And my son, Josiah. And uh, real fun. You know, it's it's one of those games for me that I need somebody that really knows how to play the game to set it up and all that kind of stuff. Because it's a it's it's a lot of. A lot of stuff in there. I mean, it's a quite amazing uh, product. So I we actually played a game. Now, this is kind of interesting because this at one time was the number one game on Board Game Geek for mm. a long time. Uh, and it's 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 long. It's epic. Super cool. Twilight Struggle. There's been a couple revisions now of it there's even an ios application of it it must be then the big space thing <sighs> Twilight the Imperium. oh through the ages that was number one yeah oh through the ages okay um big epic civilization type of game uh josiah and joseph and i played this here a few weeks ago uh, we've been super busy with our fulfillment, so our, our we we started something a while ago called Relevance Fridays, and that means we cut off work at three o'clock on Friday, come over to the house and play some games. Try mm. to try to weed out my shelf of shame just a little bit, you know. Yeah. yeah. And uh, this was a game I've had on the rack for quite a while, and we got it to the table. Our, our relevance Fridays have gone out. The, they've become irrelevant lately because we're so crazy with fulfillment right now. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I shouldn't have placed that order. Right. But uh, <laughs> we got this game to the table. And what do you think we thought about it? Um, I think you had, uh, I think Josiah whipped your ass, number one. Number two. That's um... a given. That's a given. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the game went on too long because he whipped your ass pretty quickly. Um, <laughs> uh, I, sent I think you the, some pictures in the messenger about this. You picture. did indeed. I apologize. I should have got them out and shown the world. We have it all but, laid um, out in its glory on a walnut game topper with the adventure mat, which yeah, came very nicely. Um, for some reason it's not working. You're a bad computer. Bad computer. And you need to go back to being a calculator. <sighs> Dear me. It's okay. There we go. You're seeing some pictures there of these cards. You're seeing your player tableau, Josiah and Joseph there. And then we've got that track there. Um, I absolutely think this game is very, very good. Yeah. Um, I've only played it once. Again, our, these are our first impressions. Um, but I very much want to play it again. I want to go on the iOS app and play it solo even. I hear it, there's a fairly good implementation. It's a little bit tough. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, just the, the, the leaders, the choices of grabbing a leader – and and where to grab that card i love that type of mechanism where you can maybe grab one early or you can try to wait till it comes to you but then it mm-hmm. might be gone i yeah. love that mechanism in games and it puts so pressure on doesn't it yeah i just love that and and just the the thematic progression through the ages uh it just felt really good and really satisfying to me production i have the second edition uh from uh eagle griffin games or no from cge cge um and i just thought it was great so definitely a good yeah yeah it uh i always kind of expect it to be like a map and you know putting pieces out and stuff but it's it's, you're building a tableau isn't more than anything with cards yeah yeah okay no, do you have another not. one or you want me to do another one? You do another one because I can't talk about games that I played 
before January. <laughs> <laughs> I can't well, remember. We happened to get one other uh, game to the table yep. uh, for the topper that I really uh, thought was it was one that I was very excited about getting because it was what deemed kind of the spiritual successor to the Quacks of Quendelenburg. Mm -hmm. This game was produced by North Star Games, and this particular game, you're basically brewing uh, libations, and there's different ways that you can brew these libations. Yeah. Uh, it's very interesting, the characters that you can get to do this uh, to help improve uh, the amount that you're able to get. And this game is called, I see Barry's already showing the picture, so no one can guess. <laughs> Sorry, we're in the game. <laughs> the Taverns of Tiefenthal. Mm. The Taverns of Tiefenthal. Yeah, it looks like my kind of game. So what do you think I thought about that? Um, what kind of mechanics is it? Uh, it it's kind of an action selection. There's, there's player abilities. Uh, there's a kind of a worker placement type of aspect to it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think you like it. Yeah. I, I, I I'm going to say not so bad. Okay. Um, I think I was really hyped up for it because we love the quacks of Quendelenburg. Absolutely love it. Um, and so I had high hopes that this was going to give that kind of feel. Now this is a one-time play. Yeah. Um, there's different levels that you can play this game, different cards. Um, but I found that you can add extra tables to your tavern that allows you to go through and, and stream through more cards. And you're, there's a push your luck aspect where you're streaming through these cards. Mm -hmm. and you're trying to improve your deck so that you can, with these different characters and hopefully put them in places. But once you get three of these where your tables are full, then, you, then you're then you done. And there was just something about it, and I really have a hard time to put my finger on it, and all of us kind of felt this way. It just felt like, ah, uh, it's just not quite exciting enough when you push your luck and, and you succeed. And more often than not, it seemed like you were kind of left a little bit lacking. Okay. Um, so that's why it was kind of like, I don't think it's bad. It's beautifully produced. The artwork is great. Um, we had fun playing it. So it's not like it was a horrible experience or anything like that. It was just like, every time we've played Quacks of Quendelenburg, it's just like, ah, oh, that aha mm. moment with the push your luck of brewing and stuff. And we thought yeah. we were going to have that same thing and none of us did. Yeah. So I think we probably need to get it to the table again and try to uh try to see if we can improve the experience but for us it was just kind of meh yeah yeah uh again you know when you when you do compare it to another game it, you can have that meh effect because you were expecting this but you got that it's like uh when i played the demo version of the seventh citadel you would say it's the same as the seventh continent but it's not it's it's decks of cards again but they're played in a different fashion you you your life points are different and this is different and that's different but th the same kind of mechanism of icons is the same um so yeah i was kind of like this is hard to get into because i'm so used to you know rolling this way instead of rolling that way so yeah having that expectation level can can hinder your first impressions yeah, I think that's I think that's that's fair. And that's why we always caveat this that our good the not so bad and ugly. It's an impression type of thing. Just yeah. say so they don't blow up. <laughs> <laughs> not not like Sid Sid Meier's uh civilization, right? Where they nuke you. Yeah, you actually get that far. Yeah, just that. I nuked me one time. That wasn't a good experience. You said that, and an airplane just flew overhead. <laughs> oh. I tell you what, well, I miss I miss the quarantine when there were no planes, and now all of a sudden there are planes everywhere. Oh, well, that's a good thing. 
they're, no, they're flying really low. It's all the um, you know, the it's a local airport, and everyone's got their little kind of like biplanes and flying under the coronavirus. <sighs> They're There's really annoying. All of the air, you know that. This room is supposed to be soundproof, but yet that airplane came in. <laughs> Unbelievable. Squirrel. Squirrel. Anyway, <laughs> I squirreled there. Didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Well, with that, we are going to go to our next sponsorship. Yes. And move right into our babble topic. This video was made possible with the help of Game Toppers. Upgrade your gaming experience with a Game Topper. Boom. Hey, hey, hey. Bill Huffman is in the courtyard as well as Kabuki Kid. Welcome, everyone. Well, Game Toppers, uh, we just want to uh, thank everybody so much for all the support. I just cannot. It's been a challenging time with uh, many of the delays due to COVID-19 and our supply chain things. And we were doing so well. We were ahead of schedule for m the majority of the backers, but there was a, a significant uh, group of people right at the end, likewise, that didn't get everything. Like the cup holders are just arriving now and we're just packaging them. Well, last week, we packaged all of the uh, mat racks, the Lord Burton and the JJ Burton, and these things are fantastic. They're powder coated MDF, and we made how to videos with Josiah actually assembling them. You can go right onto our website at gametoppersllc.com and go to the how to assemble page, and you can see these products and just how, how classy they really are. They're really fantastic. Super proud of them. But one of the things that I've been doing personally is we did a limited edition sculpted toppers. Then we partnered with Dog Might Games. And Dog Might, I just got to I gotta give them the, the biggest shout out. These guys have been one of my favorite uh, vendors. They, even in the middle of their trying times, were able, the two owners went in there and worked on the products um, and sent them to me so that I could personally pull out all of those sculpted rails and I personally matched up stains that were like, because every piece of wood is different. Wood, that's the beauty of wood. But I was able to take ones that were more like and grain patterns that were very similar. So the two halves matched and was able to do a lot of personal diligence as well as hand signing the backside of these toppers. They had a lot of people that wanted a signature on them. I thought, why would you want my signature? But they did. And so I took that little extra effort to do that. And I gotta tell you, these things are so gorgeous. Uh, and all of the thematic game mats that will go with them, that dragon sculpt and the Viking sculpt, it's just, I couldn't be, I, I just, I look at them and go, my goodness, these are, the coolest thing mm. ever and we're 95 almost probably almost 100 percent within a week or so we will be close to 100 percent done with united states delivery and then we will start to be packaging out the canadian order and then europe and so it's going to be very very exciting and you can go to gametoppersllc.com right now hit the late pledge button you can still take advantage of all the kickstarter prices the kickstarter stretch goals and they're going to be up for about another month till we're ready to ship that european order and then the prices are going to change and we're going to go to the normal e-commerce store so check that out at gametoppersllc.com yeah. And with that, we're going right into the babble topic. Woohoo! Which is yeah. And now it's time for the babble, 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 Berkey and Badger's board game babble. Doop a doop boom, ba doop a doop a doop boom. Babble boom. Ah. Da 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 I would do na, -na. <laughs> <laughs> Clap your hands now for Robert Brontosaurus. Yay! I love that joke. I think a lot of people are going to be um, getting emails from get from Kickstarter saying, 
you 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 your pledge is is been processed but your your product is going to be a little bit delayed um i know i've had a few so i wouldn't feel bad about it Berkey. i know you yeah, do no, it's, uh, i know you our, do our backers have been fantastic everyone's been we've been real transparent about each step and and when things take us longer and and but you just can't control these things and yeah. everything has a cascading effect that a one week delay turns into a three week delay because of all the things that it affects and you re you pivot to take care of things and it's complicated, but uh, we've been navigating really well. My son, Josiah and Joseph have been at the shop, my wife and I've been both there too packaging. So it's just been all hands on deck and we're working like crazy. Uh, to do our best, but mm -hmm. it just takes time. And when it gets complicated, it takes more time. So, yeah. but overall, we're really doing well and people are loving the product they're getting. So it's yeah. you been, know what? It, our backers you know, have been wonderful. Thank you so much. You know what I'd love? I'd what love a game, like? topper, a game topper mask and a game topper sanitizer dispenser at the table. With a little top <laughs> hat on the top? Yeah, with a little top hat and you push the top hat and it's going on. You have a Berkey face and the stuff yeah. comes out Berkey's nose. Yeah, and it's your turn to move. Okay, let me clean my hands before I touch that piece. Uh, there you go. Your turn. Oh, wait a minute. I got past the hand sanitizers. Here you go. <laughs> and we can make it sound like a sneeze. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or it could, it could deliver your favorite Berkey lines at random, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? <laughs> oh, boy. Well, we're talking about awards. Yes. And we're talking about the 2020 Gaming Awards, right? Mm-hmm. And there is a lot of stuff out there. You know, this year, Origins had a bunch of nominations. Uh, Game Toppers was actually nominated in the component category. Cool. Um, but everything kind of fell through on the awards there. I don't even know what's yeah. happening now because of the cancellations of the conventions and all the things that happened there with Origins. And so I, I don't know if they're just kind of going to forgo it this year and then that will happen again. Um, but we're looking at all these different games. Um, and most of these games are from 2019. Yeah but we call them the 2020 awards, <laughs> right? It's because that's when they get the awards. It's yeah. like after, it's, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of, what, what are we really voting on? But it's 2019, but we're, they're the 2020 of, awards. And two of the awards that, there, there's really three, because I really like the Golden Geek Awards from BGG. Okay. I really like the Spiel de Jars. And and personally, the awards that I think think are really reflective of of at least the 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 domestic uh, U United States market. And maybe that's maybe that's not a, the way to phrase it. I don't know, but mm -hmm. um, I love the Dice Tower Awards. It just seems like the criteria. It seems like the there's a ton of reviewers that are involved that are in the hobby that are playing a majority of these games, giving input to uh, these categories. And it just seems like they always hit it on the head with some of the best games out there. Um, that's my opinion. You know, feel free to, to evaluate that however you like to evaluate that. Yeah. But um, I wanted to go through a few of those things. We'll talk about the spiels. We'll talk about the Dice Tower Awards. <clears throat> and then we're going to give you a few of our own personal ones. So starting with the Spiel de Jars, yep. the Which winner was just announced. Now, we know that with the Spiel de Jars, there was three games. I got it wrong. <laughs> you did, did the you? problem with this is you, you, never get to, you never get to see these games over here uh, generally when the nominations happen. Yeah. Usually by the time they're announced, we've we've been able to play them. But the and I thought this was kind of interesting <laughs> on the Spiel site when it says it it's it it says the coveted Spiel de Jars, the game of the year. Um, they've announced the category for game of the year called Enthusiast Game of the Year. Okay. 
I've never heard that before. That's probably what it's translated as. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 it's not. Children's game of the year, which is the Kinderspiel. Yep. Right? Yep. And then you have the Kennerspiel, which is the strategy, a little bit heavier game. Yeah. So the Spiel de Jaris nominations. Oh, come on. Where'd they go? I've got them here. They're on the screen. I can't read it. <laughs> okay. You read them off. Okay, so um, the nominations were Pictures, My City, Nova Luna were the three nominations. Yep. My and City, Nova Luna, and Pictures. Yep. And the winner is? Well, it's on the screen, so there's no point of a drum roll. Pictures! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> uh, I haven't played any of them, but I was really excited about My City. It was the only one I was very excited about personally. Yeah, I saw I saw uh, the presentation of that, and it looked really good. And it's Reiner Kinesia, which Reiner is Kinesia. yeah, yeah. He has a lot of these nominations. So congratulations to Pictures. Yep, I'm sure it's good. It's it's a lightweight family type of game. Is generally now what's happening with the Spiel des Jahres. Yeah, uh, the Kinderspiel, the children's game. The winner was. It was Speedy Roll. Speedy Roll. Uh, and the other two nominations were. Roll. The the other nominations were uh, Futu Fish and Wir sind dein Roboter. <laughs> I don't know if that was actually good German or oh, not. That was pretty good, I think. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but there you go. Well, I hadn't heard any of those, so I really don't have much comment. Do you know anything about them? I know not about them. I haven't even seen them either in French either. So they must be three um, German titles. Um, I'm just looking through the other recommendations which came out. Uh, there's Slide Quest, which was recommended, uh, which I know about. And uh, people might know of Zombie Kids. I'm thinking of Zombie Bus. Yeah, I'm thinking of the wrong game now. But anyway, no. Well, the we'll move to the to the uh, Kenner Spiel then. Yeah, uh, because those... the Kenner Spiel is probably all the titles that you know about, <coughs> which include excuse me the the crew photographers from Ca Thunderworks Games, mm -hmm. uh, King's Dilemma, and the crew. Now, yeah. I've actually played two of these games, uh, Josiah has uh, played cartographers and absolutely loved it. I hear everybody loves it. Um, we actually started playing King's Dilemma with uh, Brian Pope from Arcane Wonders, Ryan Bruns, and Rick Scrand. Uh, and we played on Discord and on a live Google Doc. Um, and we're playing King's Dilemma and learning that game. We played through about four sessions of it. And we've really enjoyed it, but it's 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 a little the scoring and stuff's a little uh, yeah little tricky. Okay. Um, we like it, but Joseph, Josiah, and I have played about twenty five missions of the crew. We haven't played it now for about four weeks, but the crew is the winner. Yeah, now I hear a lot of good stuff about the crew. I think it's really great. Um, I I like trick taking games, and it just adds a little bit of a element. It's quick to get to the table. You can play a couple missions and whatever. You know, it's you can take it with you. There's there's, there's replayability. Uh, it makes you think. You know, outside of the box of normal trick taking games, it's like it's a variety pack of trick taking games. Mm -hmm. So Kabuki Kid makes a comment saying that I knew the crew would win, but I prefer cartographers personally. Ooh. Yeah, so, I like the look of cartographers. Uh, that's, that's something that I definitely want to try if I know someone that's got a copy. If I get out the house and play and meet other people. <laughs> Kabuki said that she spared from eating Tom Vassell's hat because she declared that she would eat his hat if the crew didn't win. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to eat that hat. No, 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 no. We've been there. 
<laughs> well, that's the Spiel de Jars uh, uh, and, and the Spiel Awards. Um, I just yeah, have I, a, I like them. I like them. They're good choices. You like the awards? Yeah. They're simple. There's, there's something for everyone. There's something for uh, young children. There's something for people that play occasionally. And there's something for experts, which is, I think, the three real main categories of gamer that there are. Um, but other award ceremonies think that there are more categories of gamer out there, so they create more awards, <laughs> which is nice because then it's 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 spreading the love, especially now that there's five thousand games a year coming out and whatever. Um, but uh, we'll get we'll get to that <laughs> later. Go on, carry on. I, I I I when I look at it, it seems like to me, and I could be wrong, but it seems like. The Spiel des Jahres is getting lighter weight and lighter weight and smaller games where I'm used to it being a ticket to ride, you know, a gateway game that's easy to get, that's accessible, but but a bigger game. And it mm. seems like they've just been getting smaller and simpler games in this category. And I even feel like the Kenner Spiel, the, uh, Ken, uh, yeah, the Kenner Spiel used to be heavier strategy games, you know, like Terraforming Mars and games of that weight and it seems like they've been getting lighter also mm, yeah possibly i mean but then again the king's dilemma is quite a weighty game because it relies on the players um for so for that to get nominated is you know i mean it's not something that i would like to delve into precisely because it is one it's a legacy game and two it, it depends on the players because the, it's the player interaction uh, in negotiation, which is the core of the game, so I would say that was the probably the heaviest one. Res Ancana was quite hard as well, and that was that was a, a recommendation as well. I saw that was there. Yeah, and I played that's that what one. I'm referring to it, it seems like the winners are becoming. It seems like the committee is voting on the lighter fare, and in the past, it was some of the little bit heavier, you know, Euro mechanism type games. Yeah, getting more nods. Yeah, yeah, but then again, an, a, an easier game is easier to review than a harder game. I mean, you can't you can't review the Seventh Continent and compare that to something like Ticket to Ride because they are even if if it let's let's put that let's choose another heavy game, another heavy game, um, Descent Second Edition and Seventh Continent. You can't put them in the same camp because they're one takes a lot longer to play one there's a lot of stuff hidden whereas the other one there's not as much hidden it's kind of repetitive but at the same time it's different so there's that to balance in these people have to play all the games and then they all have to vote it's kind of like first impressions they all have to say good bad or ugly and then that will those get tallied together don't they so mm -hmm. it, it, it is a hard thing to that that category is probably the hardest one to to to, ju to judge, because again, a big heavy game takes a lot to get into, and it's sometimes some games, it's not until you got to the second or third hour that it actually bam, wow, this is great, I'm enjoying this, I know where I'm going now, I know what I'm doing. Well, but, let's um, uh, yeah. let's shift gears and move over to the Dice Tower Awards. <laughs> um, one thing about the Dice Tower Awards, there's a lot of categories. And so just for the sake of time, I'm yeah. not going to go through every one, uh, but I'm, I'm going to kind of go from the bottom up. And then when we get to the more weightier categories, um, or I, I don't know if you want to say the more popular categories, I'll, I'll give the nominations. But the most innovative game uh, was actually uh, Detective City of Angels. And Detective City of Angels is designed by Evan Derrick. It's published by Van Ryder Games. Uh, I love the guys at Van Ryder Games. Uh, they're, they're an affiliate partner of Game Toppers, too, so I've gotten to know AJ quite a bit. And uh, they've just really been doing some awesome stuff over there. And uh, I haven't played this game, uh, so I didn't actually vote on this particular category. There was... Only a couple categories I voted on because I have played several of the games. Um, but when I haven't played a lot of the games, then I choose not to not to not to engage. But anyway, uh, looks fantastic. Detective uh, City of Angels. 
and now I got to back up here. And then <laughs> the best two player game. Interesting. Best two player game was Watergate. Watergate. And this here is distributed, I believe, by Capstone Games. Designer is Matthias Kramer. It's a two player game. And it's published by Frosted Games, Capstone Games, Pegasus Spiel. So there's some combination things going on there. Um, again, I hear a lot of really good stuff about Watergate. Have anybody had a chance to play that? <laughs> no. I think that no. was a resounding no. Rodney no, Smith has. No. <laughs> so then we're going to move on to... Uh, best theming and the game that won. Yep. Good seeing you, Bill. Thanks for stopping in. Uh, best theming this here uh, had some really good, really good uh, nominations. Um, but without going into all of those, the winner is horrified, mm. horrified uh, from forest Prusen, uh creative Prospero hall. Uh, players one to five. Ravensburger is the publisher, and this game was nominated uh, for everything in else. Categories. Uh, yeah. Just shaky. Just shaky. Just said horrified is light but fun. Yeah. And I'm hearing people really like this. Rick Ortloff just said liked horrified. We played it during one of the li library uh, game nights in Fergus Falls. Um, Kabuki Kid said. If you haven't played Watergate, but playing Nixon sounds icky. But I am not. A crook. I am not. A crook. <laughs> There'd be a new game soon. There'd be a new. There'd be an updated version soon. <laughs> I reckon. Um, so congratulations to yeah. Horrified. I'd yep. like to try it. It looks pretty cool. Yeah, I've I've seen it played. So. Um, I'm going to skip over one here and go to best solo game. Yeah. Best solo game is Lord of the Rings Journey to Middle Earth. Mm. Fantasy Flight Games. Uh, Nathan Hajek and Grace Holdinghouse. Um, Fantasy Flight always puts together these great thematic type of games. Um, again, I haven't played this one. I hear great things We've about played it. it. So congratulations played to... Lord of the Rings, Journeys in Middle Earth. We played it with Paul Grogan. Oh, that we played that? Yeah. That that has the app? I thought yeah. we played a different one. No, it's that one. Well, the heck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was it was fun. Yeah. I remember it being fun. I don't remember a lot about it. I, yeah. Yeah, I don't see. I don't fun. see the appointments of that award. It's just <laughs> uh, the best reprint <clears throat> from our friend Ignacy Chevacek. The winner is Predaporte. Predaporte. Yep. This has been all redone with fantastic artwork. Uh, it's really something. Uh, Portal Games has been doing some really cool stuff. Um, I hear good things uh, about this game. I haven't played it. I haven't played it. Uh, and I'm, I'm going quickly here. We'll spend a few, a little bit more time on a couple of these categories, but I just wanted to go quickly. Yep. Uh, best party game. The winner is Wavelength. Well, I generally don't care about this category. <laughs> he says after being the sheriff of Nottingham, that would fall into that oh, category. That's not a party game. Yes, it is. Ah. <laughs> best game from a small publisher best game from and this is kind of interesting this is giving credit to publishers that are small that they've produced less than five games or something like that yeah. um i'd kind of like going up it, it's going it's giving up. them an opportunity to get an award for something while they're so they're kind of competing with asthma day or not having to compete with an asthma day or a big publisher that yeah. has more resources. Yeah. But I'm finding that some of the people in this category are putting out some of the best games ever. Mm -hmm. um, and the winner of that is res arcana. 
Mm -hmm. But this is a Thomas Lehman uh, design published by Sand Castle Games. Uh, I don't know much about it. You've never played it? Never. No. It's a nice game. It's kind of like Splendor. You're building uh, with cards, but you also have resources, which are tokens. Um, I played this once. I re It was a little bit over my head, but I really enjoyed it. It's something that I want to come back to because it's like, as I said, it's like Splendor, but it's like deeper. Um, and again, each player has a character. And so you have some special powers which are related to either dark magic or light magic or trading or whatever. So you, everyone has like a, a, a different starting edge and, you know, it kind of puts them on a road of where they're going to go. Um, so, yeah, really enjoyed it. Um, but as I said, I, I, I didn't understand it at the first. It took a while to get my engine going. But, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Want to play it again. Um, so, yeah. Cool. Tip my hat. Well, um, I'm going to. That was like a year and a half a ago. Categories, and I'm going to mention the nominations now. Okay. Um, so we're going to go to the best strategy game. This is a category that I really enjoy. I like strategy games. And so the, the nominations for this was City of the Big Shoulders, Coloma, Maracaibo, Paladins of the West Kingdom and Watergate, and Watergate. And the winner was Maracaibo. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Maracaibo is designed by Alexander Pfister. He's one of my favorite designers. Uh, Great Western Trail is one of my favorite games. I love Port Royal also from Alexander Pfister, and I, and I like Mombasa a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't actually been able to play Maracaibo, but I hear great things about it. And I hear a lot of fantastic things about Coloma also. Yeah. So have you played any of these on the list? No. I have played Paladins of the West Kingdom, and I liked it a lot, but I think I like Raiders of the North Sea better. Oh, yes, I have played Paladins. Sorry, yeah, I've played that once. You know, it's a little heavier Euro, but yeah. I really would like to try Coloma and Maracaibo. Okay. And I don't know much about City of the Big Shoulders. No, Looks like it's a railroad it. theme. Oh, yes, to... yes, yes, yes. It was at BGG Con. You got to play it? Um, no, I'm still waiting for a copy. <laughs> okay. Oh, I do remember that now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I got a pin from that guy. Uh, the next category uh, that we're going to take a look at is best game from a new designer. Mm -hmm. Um. And this one here, instead of going through all the nominees, I'm just going to announce the winner there is Wingspan from Elizabeth Hargrave. Yeah. Uh, uh, Wingspan is getting a ton of play. We're going to talk about some of our games that we think for 2019, but yeah. I've played this game quite a few times. I have the new expansion and haven't got it to the table yet, but Elizabeth Car uh, Hargrave and Stonemeyer <laughs> Games have really done a great job. This game was in such hot demand, you couldn't get it. Mm -hmm. uh, beautiful artwork, really quite amazing. Okay, best family game. Nominations are Horrified, Parks, Point Salad uh, by AEG, and Tiny Towns by AEG, and Wingspan. Uh, the winner is... It's on the screen. Point salad. <laughs> there's no, there's no kind of, uh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so just need, played, just need dramatic music. <laughs> I played every one of these except horrified. Okay, I got to play Parks at a at a game night in Fargo here a while back. Had but fun. Would, would you say that the the just one one, the just game? <laughs> actually came out on top i think any of these i you know i haven't played horrified so i don't know for sure but i think any of these deserve to win uh, tiny yeah. towns is amazing we played that together at tom Gro or at paul grogan's house mm -hmm. last year at the uk games fair uh uh k king my dear friend uh that's helped us with our kickstarters and stuff she made a 3d printed card holder for part 
point salad and gave that to us uh, when she, that her and her fiance were staying at our home. And uh, we play this all the time. I love that game. It's just so easy to get to the table. So easy when we got 20 minutes just to whip it out. Uh, wingspan, same thing. Uh, and parks are just really good game. Really great games in that category, right? Yeah, definitely. So that's best family games. Best expansions. We've got uh, Seven Wonders Armada. We have the Quacks of Klendolenburg, the Herb Witches. We have Space Base, the Emergence of Shy Pluto. I need to get this. I love uh, Space Base. And yeah. I don't have that. Uh, Underwater Cities has New Discoveries. And Terraforming Mars Turmoil. The winner is the Quacks of Quendelenburg, the Herb Witches. Yeah. Well, I haven't played this yet. Oh, uh, you got it. It's on your shelf I shame. have it, actually. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if it's available. Um, no, it might not be. It might be only in Germany at the moment. <laughs> yeah, we love Quacks, so... I got to believe it just adds a little extra depth. Um, but these all look like great. I've played Underwater Cities. I've played Terraforming Mars. I have Turmoil, but I haven't played it with Turmoil. Uh, I've got all those games, but haven't played all the expansions. Right. <laughs> less and less chance of playing them now. <laughs> That's the thing. <laughs> uh, best cooperative game. The winner was Horrified. And the best that. board game production was Cloud Spire. Mm -hmm. And both of these have showed up in multiple categories. So yeah. congratulations on those. Uh, best artwork. I'm going to go through the nominations of those really quick. I know this takes so long, so I'm trying to trying to whip through it here. But uh, Atlantic Rising, second edition. Parks. Mm -hmm. uh, Predaporte. Uh, Unmatched, the Battle of Legends. <laughs> And then Wingspan. And yeah. the winner was Parks. Now, this really surprised me because I've singuished uh, uh, these. I've, I've, I've seen some of the artwork of these different games. Um, and I would have not thought Parks was anything. It was nice. It was really nice and educational well designed well laid out but nothing that wowed me it's refreshing um, you look at that you know predaporte artwork it's like wow yeah um, i thought wingspan's artwork was really awesome but i, I love birding so yeah i'm a birdie so i've seen it all before in all the books <laughs> yeah <laughs> did you have any thoughts on any of that uh, on the Dice Tower Awards, it was nice to see it, uh, uh, some variety. Um, well, as you said, a few games. I mean, on the artwork. Oh, on the artwork. Oh, right. Um, no, not really. <laughs> it's it's one of those it's one of those categories which for me it's like it should well, be under we're, production. We're gonna go to the final category to close this up. Yeah. I feel like I've been talking forever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's so many categories. There's so many things <laughs> on here. Yeah, there's uh, too many. Let's make our own categories. Nominees. This is the big <laughs> prestigious game of the year. No spoilers. Is Clank Legacy Acquisitions Incorporated, Detective City of Angels, we've talked about, mm -hmm. Empires of the <laughs> North by Portal Games, Horrified comes up again the lord of the rings journey in middle earth from fantasy flight games maracaibo alexander fister from capstone games paladins of the west kingdom renegade game studios tainted grail the fall of avalon and watergate 
been mentioned several times. And the winner is... Surprise, surprise. Wingspan. <laughs> Obviously, they were nominated, too. It wasn't yeah. a nominated list. Yeah. Um, Wingspan has gotten so much love in so many... Uh, uh, the Golden Geek Awards, they won a lot of awards, uh, a lot of categories. It continues to get nominated. Um, I, I'll i play Wingspan anytime with anybody. I, I'm i not bored of it. I i don't know. I've, I think I've played it six or seven times. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm good with it. I like it. And it's a little bit of an engine builder. And um, it's not overly complex, but there's a lot of great I always feel excited trying to figure it out and trying to combo things. And, you know, it's got a little bit of randomness that some people kind of knock the game for, but I like it. Yeah. Clank acquisition sounds good, but I have such a hard time ever getting a legacy game to the table because we can never get the game group together. No, no, that's, <laughs> yeah. I'm not even going to bother. <laughs> the only legacy game I have is Seventh Continent, but that's not legacy. And that's easy to get to the table because it's just me. I'm doing a lot of promotion for the Seventh Continent. But it's, it's, it's campaigns, kind of. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, Empires of the North, I hear a lot of fantastic things about that. And I love Imperial Settlers. And uh, I really would like to try <laughs> Empires of the North. Hmm. I want to try Horrified and Maracaibo. I want to try everything. Um, I'm, I'm quite, I'm quite happy with this dice tower list. It's, it's varied. Uh, there's a lot of different winners, which is what I think is really the objective of doing an award ceremony with this many different uh, categories. Um, as we're about to find out, <laughs> um, having a lot of categories, but having the same winner is, is not interesting and it doesn't really promote the hobby. Um, for me personally, you know, it's like saying that this film's won 27 awards, uh, for the same things, but it still doesn't tell you if the film is the best film in the world. It just points you, it just makes that stand out from the crowd, uh, when you should be, uh, what this list is giving me a, a bit of everything. Um, I'm sure that, I think that the list has changed a little bit because th- there was a time when it was uh, the best new publisher was their third game, but now it's their fifth game. So a new publisher can have up to five titles before they get. And again, that, that might be uh, a good idea due to the fact that to, to, as I said, to get a variety in the list, and a variety of exposure for a, a, a bigger audience of games, I, I think, is is justified. Um, but um, something like uh, what was it? Uh, the um, original uh, theming. How the how do you do an original theming? <laughs> Most games mechanisms are the same. Most themes are the same. Uh, but um, hey ho, hey ho! But yeah, um, it's, it's, it's a good that's list. An interesting category, and I think it's a good segue to move into some of the games we thought were really good in 2019, and maybe we can just go back and forth with a few ideas. Yeah, um, I'll start out with one that that is in this particular category of best theming nominees. <clears throat> I didn't go through those nominees, but. This is one of the games that we had a lot of fun playing. I want to play it again. We haven't played it for now about two or three months. I don't know how long. (laughs) Um, But Star Wars Outer Rim from Corey Konetska, Tony Fanchi uh, at Fantasy Flight Games. And when you play Star Wars Outer Rim, you just feel like you're a bounty hunter. You just feel like you're you're searching out things. Uh, The production is great. You know, I think it's, it's primed to have more expansions as a typical fantasy flight game does. But uh, we had a blast playing that game. I think that's one of the, one of the really fun games of 2019. Hmm. Yeah. 
one of mine one of mine uh, i played once but it got my interest um it's probably the only no it's not the probably the second only eric clang game that i've ever played uh victorian masterminds um there was it was elegantly looking um it played fluently and there's this nice mechanism of stacking chips which then reversed and you you play out the actions in in that order really enjoyed it um a nice idea clever interaction between the players as well as you know uh, your objectives or what you're doing uh, really enjoyable uh victorian mastermind yeah i've heard good things about that um i put in a game uh that uh i didn't see anywhere in the list here and i didn't i i don't think i saw it in any of the nominations but this is a game that came out from Gray Fox Games um, that uh, we actually designed our Viking themed game map from the same artist who did the artwork of this game. So when you play play uh, Champions of Midgard on this Viking mat, it feels really thematic, mm -hmm. but it was really designed from the art inspiration from Reavers of Midgard. Mm -hmm. And Reavers of Midgard uh it's just got a different feel to it than than champions it's 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 it it's less worker placement in a sense because it's kind of more action selection but everywhere that you decide to go whichever worker you're going to go there but you're going to get something but the first person to get there gets the most no, and so then there's this balance the second guy person's going to get the, the next amount and then a lesser amount for the third person and there's this balance of when do we go there and how do we i really really like that game i love the theme i like the way it works uh i think the art and the production value of the game is just remarkable and i would have liked to have seen that had more nods somewhere along the line Mm. Um, I'm wondering if it, it wasn't in 2018 or something because it was a Kickstarter, was it? Um, it might. It shouldn't have been. It shouldn't have been. If it's on your list, you you'd have researched it. <laughs> no, it's in 2019. Yeah, no, yeah. I did. It's 2019. Yeah. Anyway, I I would have loved to have seen that get some recognition because I really enjoy that game. Oh, well, most of my, I mean, the only game that I've got on my list, uh, which has been mentioned is Reza, Reza Arcana. But um, no, another game which I really enjoyed from last year is Space Gate Odyssey, where you're building a space station and it's programmation from whatever the players do, which will make these um, uh, space people teleport into your base and then you've got to teleport them out to other planets and so they, they're robotically programmed from what you program but everybody's programming at the same console it's a lot more in depth and complex than what i've just explained it because that sounds a bit like kind of robo rally but it's not because you're building a space station and you'll you have some control you have quite a bit of control but the other players will be living off of your control but um really really good really good brain burner yeah. puzzle game um, I have two games that have been mentioned in all these nominations. I'm just going to say them together. They're both lightweight games, but that I really, really like a lot that we've already talked about. But it's Point Salad and The Crew. Mm. Uh, I just thought they were great games for, for what they are. That yeah. lighter fare, quick to the table, engaging, replayable. Uh, all those things that I think work really great for a smaller filler not quite, a, you know, it's a little more than a palate cleanser, but um, great games, just really fun games. Oh, yeah, I've, I've just seen another one, which is on the list as well, Tiny Towns, which didn't win, so I'm a bit angry about that, because yeah. uh, <laughs> I love that game. It's a fantastic, um, again, you have some control, but it, it's a lot of interaction from the other players as they name resources, and then you've got to collect that resource and put it into your town, and then when you create a formation... With those resources it might build a building that you can then decide to build or not um and each building has its own way of scoring points or has its own powers and stuff and so it's it's a very oh, i don't know it's, it's again a puzzle brain burning game where you're trying to strategically outthink the other players outplay the other players but at the same time they're doing the same to you 
in a very simple manner by saying stone and that's it wood i have an honorable mention i haven't played it but one that i've i've watched some videos on Mm -hmm. and i actually own it i just haven't got it to the table yet but one that i'm really excited to play is from come on uh and that's death may die which is an eric lang game okay and uh I've never actually, this will probably be really surprising to people, but I've never played a Cthulhu themed game. <gasps> no. Yeah. You know, I'm aware of the mythos, I'm aware of many of those games. I've just never played any. Wow. That's hard. Um, to believe. But then again, it's not hard to believe. <laughs> well, this, this game looks really great. And uh, listening to the Secret Cabal Gaming podcast and Jamie and the guys talk about the game and then watching some other videos. I really want to play this game. Mm -hmm. After we get done with fulfillment, we're going to have a relevance Friday, and this is going to be one of the games. Now you're going to have a relevance Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, <laughs> and then a family weekend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just but... talked to Kay King and Andy and said, yeah, we got to get together. They got to come up here and yeah. stay for a weekend, and we'll have a little mini Berkey con. Yeah, I might have to do that as well. I have a have a, a con here because that poor table there is that topper is just collecting dust. You have to hoover it. Oh, um, <laughs> oh god. Uh, other honorable mentions: Batman, really, really enjoyable kind of um, miniature top gaming game, which is uses resource management. Um, really enjoyed that. Um, God, it didn't win the best um, component because some of the wobbly bases and figures. But uh, the artwork is really good still. Um, yeah. Greenville, 1980 well, something. I good things about that. Oh, I can't remember the year. Yeah, it's a fantastic Dixit game which relies on storytelling um, and working together cooperatively to to, to win. Um it's got phenomenal artwork, which just leads your imagination uh, as you create your own kind of Stranger Things escape from Freddy Krueger stories. So um, I could go on. There were a lot of good games that I played, but not a lot of games. <laughs> um, Netatanka, a really nice worker placement game. Uh, there's an original theme uh with the native american indians building uh totem poles and and getting along and calling the spirit and and catching buffaloes and and spreading the work someone will skin it while someone else takes the meat um okay. really fun and uh oh yeah another one play which i really loved was era medieval age a matt leacock game oh yeah really nice uh, city building game. I like city building games, I think. Um, <laughs> where you're rolling dice and collecting stuff and resources and then uh, whatever you build will affect whatever the, the next die... It's a dice building game. It's a dice... Yeah, because you're building with dice. But, uh, yeah. That is some of my favourite games from 2019. Well, folks, I think we have babbled on about awards. Um... You know, I can't. I, I think I, I think both you and I feel like we're not playing enough games to to talk real intelligently about all of them. As as we would like to have more more knowledge of all these games, so mm. that we could you know be more professional about communicating about them. But you know, the truth is, there's so many frigging games that are coming out, and we've had a lot of interesting disruptions to gaming this year. Yeah. And again, we're, we're normal people and uh, probably a lot of you are normal people as well. And so you can kind of relate to what we're experiencing and, um, and what we're going through. And again, you know, you don't have to get everything. Basically, <laughs> that's why you rely on people like us and the Dice Tower and Board Game Geek and Man vs. Meeple to give you is much information from our point of view. And so hopefully we're doing that from the stuff that we have actually touched on. We can give a different point of view. I know that I can give you a different point of view from the award ceremonies 
um, which are over in the States and vice versa. So, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, it's fun <sighs> to talk about all these different games that are coming out. And I, I mean, the, the truth is there's just a fantastic amount of great games that are coming out, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a lot of good games. There's a lot of mediocre. There's even more mediocre games. But hopefully uh, <laughs> we can help point you in the direction what's a mediocre and what's a great game. Uh, yeah. So I'm just looking at the games I've played this year, and it's, it's really sad. <laughs> Let's close that window down. Thank you, Board Game Geek, for remembering everything that I've played. Thank you, Board Game Geek, for, yeah, for being there. Yeah, that's a fantastic tool. And thank you for being well, here. With that, I've got this new dust out, collector. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> with that, sorry. we're going to shut down the, this episode of Berkey and Badger. But you can find us. This audio, this podcast is going to get professionally audio edited by Sir Badger <laughs> the Brave. And Stay it's going to have uh, a much better production content than our live show. Uh, with all the drops and all of that. And you can find that on iTunes and Stitcher Radio on your favorite iOS devices. Uh, and you can also reach out to us at the Board Game Geek Guild 2248. And we may put up a poll. What was your favorite game of yes. 2019? Yes. And so uh, which award ceremony do you do you deem as the the penultimate one which guides your um you're purchasing yeah exactly yeah yeah that'll be fun mm. and you can check us out on twitter at berkey and badger or on facebook berkey and badger and you can go to barry's website board games everybody should you can check Hello. out all his reviews but you can also see all of the past episodes of the berkey and badger board game babble show and as always, we want to thank our sponsors, Arcane Wonders, and check them out at arcanewonders.com and gametoppersllc.com. And with that, you can send us out there, Badger. Bye-bye. <laughs>